We live in Eastern Shore, Maryland. I'm an avid snowboarder. I get it, luckily, between 20 and 25 days in a year. I remember going through the woods, I remember some really great lines. I was on high blood pressure medicine, but I didn't feel bad until he told me, I told him I felt like I was gonna get sick. While skiing down Sleepy Time Road, which is one of the catwalks that leads down into the back bowls, he had a sudden collapse. Well, he was the most critical. I mean, he obviously arrested, so he was technically dead. Vail Ski Patrol arrived, um, started continued CPR. They were able to get an automated external defibrillator down to him in about three minutes. Um, and uh, were able to deliver a couple of shocks with some CPR and get, his, get him resuscitated and get a pulse started again. Then uh, our paramedics, some of our paramedics arrived on the scene. Uh, we were able to further stabilize him, get him prepared for transport, and then a snowmobile was used to tow him uh, out of the back bowls, back up to the top of the mountain to then be skied down the front side to an ambulance. I mean, people are unselfish just helping out. I mean, like everybody on the mountain just jumping in. Like the one guy I mentioned, David Dent, he was on a vacation and turned around and helped do CPR. I mean, the ER docs came down, the Greenberg came down. I mean, everybody just pitched in to save somebody they didn't even know. Dr. Jerry Greenberg is one of our two cardiologists in Vail, and he happened to be skiing Vail that day. And Dr. Greenberg said, I'm the cardiologist, I'm probably gonna take care of this guy. So he literally commandeered a town of Vail bus um, and grabbed it and had the driver drive him over to Vail Valley Medical Center, where he then got the cath lab in motion, ready for Peter to come in. He had a cath procedure done with stents, and then uh, he was very unstable, so he had to be transferred down to PSL, where he could get you know the higher level of care. I was working the ICU shift that day um, and I got the call therefore from the Vail ER doc I believe uh, who told me the story to give doc to doc report as we always do. And we couldn't fly that day due to weather so he was taken by ground critical care transport. He had multiple uh, drug infusions going, he was intubated on a ventilator, he had a balloon pump placed at the cath lab in Vail. And he made it here obviously okay and we continued his care. He was uh, kept in hypothermic state to help protect his brain after his cardiac arrest and then 24 hours later we warmed the patient back up to normal body temperature because the real question in these patients is was there much or any uh, brain damage uh, and it was wonderful that he woke up and he gave us I remember a thumbs up uh, so we knew he was in there. This really was a life and death situation and the orchestra and everyone who plays an instrument in that orchestra just was perfectly in tune for the care of Peter. And it's also a sort of a validation of the training and preparedness. It's really, a, I think, the why. The story of the why just came right in front of them in flesh and blood to thank them for everything that they do to train even for the most unusual circumstances. Thanks for coming. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I told so many people about you. Yeah. I know it sounds trivial, but you know, thank you for you know, reaching out and saving my life. You know, because I wouldn't be here without them. You know, at no point along the way. You know, from the bottom of our hearts, we say thank you. You know, we could not think of not coming back to say thank you, and hopefully. Um, you know, inspire you guys to continue doing what you do. So, you know, thank you. Thank you to everyone, everyone there and, you know, yeah. <laughs>